Welcome to another episode of Morning Mojo, brought to you by me, your host, Shane Solomon. I'm delighted to have on the sofa with me this morning, this young, beautiful Georgia Cockle. And today we're going to be talking about manifestation. And uh, for someone so young, this is a word I didn't expect to be talking about today with you, Georgia. So <laughs> your understanding of manifestation, let's go. So to like summarize it, manifestation is just basically turning a thought and idea into your reality. Um, so you know over like the pandemic, um, a lot of people will be talking about manifestation and they think it's just all about affirmations and say your affirmations before you go to bed and like your dream reality comes true, which is true to an extent, but um, there's a lot more to it. So if you th remember this word, um, the all is mind, the universe is mental, right? Oh, <clears throat> so say it again. The all is mind, the universe is mental. Okay. So basically everything around us is like um, a product of our imagination. So if you think the sort of biggest tool is like our conscious and our subconscious. So our conscious mind is sort of like the voice you hear in your head when you're thinking about things. Um, and the biggest part is our subconscious. So your subconscious is sort of influenced by your environment, things that happen, um, say. And the way you're brought up as well, <clears throat> right? Like mm. conditioning. So Definitely. When, when we're brought up as children, what our parents kind of teach us and install in us and say, don't touch that, it's hot, you can't do that, it's dangerous, you can't do this. You know, the, mm. the, the thoughts that go into your subconscious and you're like, ah, oh, I know that to be true, I can't do that. So to to change it is is part of it as well yeah so definitely so I think the biggest thing is you need to become aware of what your subconscious thoughts are mm. so say something happens and um like the story you tell yourself about it is sort of what your subconscious is telling you um or say you have a goal in mind but your subconscious is telling you something different it's going to prevent you from getting that goal so say I have a goal of making um like 10 million pounds or right, that's a dramatic that's example specific, but <laughs> specific. I like that, yeah. uh, let's say I want to become a millionaire by the end of the year or something but say my mindset is very sort of it's like a very scarcity mindset um I have a bad relationship with money I'm always telling myself I have no money I'm poor or there's no opportunities my subconscious is going to influence everything so no matter how well I do in like say one month um, my subconscious will bring me back down to that level. It's a bit like an aer like um, an aeroplane. So say it's like programmed to go to one set destination, right? Mm -hmm. And you're traveling along and then you hit like some extreme weather, there's like turbulence and everything. It will go on like a sort of deviation. So say your like goal is to get a million pounds. Say you have like one week, you're getting like a hundred thousand pounds from something that's your sort of deviation and you're like, you're going off track from your original like goal sort of. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then your subconscious will bring you back onto track. So the airplane's back on track to get to your own destination. So it's a bit like that. So we've got two things. So <clears throat> how do we change it then? So you've got the, the conscious mind mm -hmm. and, and you can tell yourself, and it's more than this. This is quite a deep subject we're, we're touching on here because <laughs> it's more than just wishful thinking. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people will say, oh, I'd like to make a million pounds. Or I'd like to have the best life. I'd love to have great relationships. I'd like to have all this. Mm -hmm. I'd like, I'd like, I'd like, I'd like. But the problem is they don't take any action. They don't do anything to do it and to, and to change their conditioned mind. Because that's the thing. You can say as much as you're blue in the face that you want this and want that. But if your subconscious mind is not, you know, uh, at the same level, then it's going to keep de 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 you know, bringing you back mm. to, to where you were. So how do you change that? What advice would you give our listeners, our viewers that could start them on the path of hopefully getting to be where they want to be? So it sounds really silly, but the sort of best thing to do is fantasize. So literally, ev <laughs> literally everything is, you know, it's an idea. It's a daydream of someone's like brain, isn't it? So um, you imagine it, you visualize it and like go into really extreme detail about what it is you want um the sort of colors the space um even go down to sort of like what are you wearing what's your house like 
Um, how are you going to walk around? How are you going to feel in yourself? And, you know, feeling is the secret. Feelings um, are everything. I was just about to say that. <laughs> and um, if you can hold that feeling and you, you're imagining it, um, they say that the sort of feeling will raise your vibration because everything is like a vibration. It's like an energy frequency. Um, but also they say holding on to like, those really positive feelings, but when that happens, you're not going to be feeling that high like positivity all the time because um, sometimes it's a bit unsustainable. So try and make it so it's as natural as possible, like it's already in your reality. Um, so the fun thing is, you, can you see it? Okay, do you think you can achieve it? Yes, yeah, I can. But are you willing to? And the sort of will and willingness is a big thing because you have to make sacrifices, don't you, to Correct. achieve it. And if you're not making sacrifices in other areas, you're sacrificing your dream. Um, you're right. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, in my opinion, you're right. I mean, I've got a few more years on you. So, so my question to you, if you don't mind me asking, only because of the subject matter, how old are you? Um, I'm 25, but I'm 26 at the end of the week. So you're so young <laughs> and you, you talk with such great wisdom. Mm. So where have you got this inspiration from? I mean, if your parents installed this into you, have you picked up yourself from somewhere else? Where did you get this knowledge? Um, so I guess from like a young age, my parents had always instilled to me that if you want something, you have to work extremely hard to go and get it. Um, so I've already <laughs> had that sort of idea in my mind um and then especially over the past few years um I've really gone out of my way to try and sort of do a lot of self-improvement I read a lot of sort of not self-help books but um I'm quite in touch with sort of spirituality beliefs um oh hallelujah like... <laughs> reach out and be healed <laughs> Neville Goddard uh Dr Joe Dispenza um you know I like reading all those sorts of books um yeah it's fascinating and really refreshing to have this conversation with someone so young as yourself. And you're doing great things, of course, with the Cornwall Chamber of Commerce, which mm. I must say, you ladies are absolutely rocking the Cornwall <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. Back in the day, when I started my business, I wanted to join the local Chamber of Commerce. They were really old fuddy-duddies and they wouldn't even let me in. You know, it was just, it was just, ugh. it was really yuck. Oh. Um, and, uh, and one of those things led me on to set up a bit of a networking organization myself because I thought, well, one of those, you guys, because you wouldn't let me in. You know, so I started thinking a little bit outside the box. Um, but the chamber, I recently joined the chamber, I say maybe four or five years ago, I think, and just doing such wonderful work. Um, and, uh, and you've become part of that now. And how do you feel that that's helped your kind of journey at the moment? Um, I definitely notice a big shift in my confidence. Um, say if you met me around, around the start of last year and definitely a year before, <laughs> it's fair to say you'd see like a completely different person because although I'm quite naturally reserved as is I was a lot more withdrawn and a lot more quiet and I think having those or gaining those skills to be able to talk to anybody and not have that sort of judgment or dismissal from other people um because our like network our community is so friendly and uplifting um you know it can really help sort of help you improve in mm. all sorts of different ways and so for people listening to this now and the idea why i started this podcast is i'm very lucky to have a couple of followers including my mum and my dad you know who will listen um <laughs> but for those people who are listening to this and then perhaps starting their day where they get out of bed and they stub their toe you know bang as soon as they get out of the flip's sake you know and things start going wrong from that moment you know what would you say to those people to shift their their mindset early on in the morning what can they do? Mm. Well, pain's only temporary a lot of the time. So Who is this girl? This is <laughs> Yeah, go on. Yeah. Um, so say going back to like the aeroplane theory. Mm -hmm. Um, say you're going through rough weather and they say you'll oh, put your seatbelt on, you're going through turbulence. You can't hop out of that aeroplane in the mid sky, can you? You no. have to wait it out. Mm. So it's a bit like with everything else discomforts temporary um bad times are temporary you just sort of have to hang on and wait there 
No, that is not an excuse to stay in bad, toxic <laughs> relationships or bad work environments or mm -hmm. just sort of stay in there because oh, I'll wait out to my sunny destination. It's a bit of like common sense sort of. But um, if you, you can have a bad moment, but then you have to sort of try and recenter yourself. Um, do a little stretch go listen to some uplifting music, Music's move around, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, go see your dog, go see a loved one. You know, there's all sorts of things you can do to sort of remind yourself that, okay, everything's going to be okay. Um, yeah. What do you do? What do I do when things aren't working? Mm. Uh, I'm, I go straight to the music mm -hmm. uh, and I'll just take a moment, literally sit, sitting down somewhere, lying down somewhere and just put some music on because for me, Music is just an amazing kind of release and it gets me back in the visual, visual oh, it's easy for me to say visualization stage. You know, I can put a track of music on and just be inspired and then just my energies go back to where they should be. Mm -hmm. uh, different for everyone else, of course. For some people, it's walking, you know, some people, it's swimming. I do like a bit of swimming, but sometimes it's not practical for me to do that because I've got an appointment to go to or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what I tend to do. Um, nice. But also I tend to make sure I have conversations with people that lift me up mm. because this is the thing. There's that saying where you can, you know, you can choose your friends, but not your family. Um, and it's so true. So I try and make sure that the people I spend the most time with are better than me in terms of where they are in life and, and more developed in their kind of mindset. So I can just gleam a little bit of that. Um, and, and there's, there's things, my friends that I used to, hang around with a lot at school, I don't tend to see anymore. Not because they're bad people. Mm. They're just not the sort of people that think or resonate in the kind of manifestation mode that I do. And um, so, yeah, so I just surround myself with like-minded people mm. and uh, just try and kind of gleam a little bit from them. Like I'm doing from you now. I'm learning from <laughs> you now. So what is your definition of success? I'm always interested to see what people's idea of success is because it's different for every person, but what is it for you? What does success look like? Hmm. I don't know. It can look like all sorts of different things. Um, for me, I guess doing something that aligns with, like, say, my perceived purpose. Um, I used to use the word, um, well, I'm passionate about this, but passion can be described as like an overwhelming sort of emotion. And that doesn't really last a long time. Um, it's a bit like motivation. You could be motivated to go to the gym, but that doesn't last very long sometimes. You have true a bad that. day, you could feel tired or anything. Um, so it's a bit more about sort of discipline, being disciplined about sort of doing something. Because, um, you know, that motivation goes up and down, but discipline sort of, bit constant um it's like gradually going up onto where you want to be um so I guess success could be where I'm feeling aligned with what my end goal is possibly and I guess if you have an idea of your purpose that you know you could do all sorts of different things that are aligning with your purpose to so say for me I feel like my purpose on earth or my life is to say so help uplift others, make people feel seen, because a lot of people don't feel like that. So say in my job at the moment, working with the business community, it's honestly so rewarding having someone come up to you and say, wow, I've made such great business coming to your event. I've um, just gained this client and I've got so much money out of it. You know, that's helping someone, that's changing someone's mm. life. And you only want 15% of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's honestly, like, jokes aside, it is really rewarding just to see that spark in their eyes, the hope, you know, you're helping someone else's sort of dream. Um, but, yeah, you can sort of apply that to all sorts of things. You know, having a conversation with a stranger on the street or with a colleague or whatever you know if you're helping change their mindset helping them feel better it's yeah <laughs> really. that's great well i think it's purpose is the key thing mm. which resonates with me a lot and a lot of the guests that i have in here and and having that purpose to to help other people i think that's probably the best thing we can do you know as humans to help other people and inspire them and that's certainly my purpose i love lifting people up making them feel better from when they met me you know there was one particular time I've said it here on the podcast before where 
I went into, into a local pub and the chap behind the bar, he was only young, he's like 18, 19, working behind the bar. And he goes, oh, Shane, he said, I absolutely love your videos and what you're doing and stuff like that. He said, I'd love to do that. Mm-hmm. I said, well, you can do that. Yeah. I said, you can do that. I said, the thing is, you're working here behind the bar because you're unaware that with a shift of your mindset, you could actually own the bar. You know, and this is the thing. And I, I just love kind of sparking that little kind of thought in people's mind mm-hmm. that if they work their mind, but you, it doesn't happen overnight. And like it goes back to the wishful thinking side of things. Mm-hmm. So what sort of things do you do daily then to keep your mind sharp? Are you reading books like, you know, audio books, podcasts? What stimulates your knowledge? Um, I like reading books. So I say like listening to podcasts um, and just talking with like family. Um, so say... At the minute, I read all sorts of different books. Um, but lately, I've been I've joined um, a book club recently. Um, Black Voices Corn are doing a book club, okay. and um, the recent book we read is about um, looking back at sort of slavery, saying God in the west coast of Africa, um, and the sort of colonization, um, and when hearing the sorts of stories of the different people, and um, reading about their sort of hope for a sort of different situations, um, keeping them going. So you can learn a lot about le- reading about the past or reading about biographies from people. Um, you read about their sorts of stories and how they've overcome hardship. Mm. Um, so you can know from their experience that it was possible. If you look back at, say, your own personal experiences, you can remind yourself that, oh, I can do anything. I overcame this. Um, and then you can read sort of more success stories, um, reading about what, you know, success other people have had. They've gained sort of like millions um, or even smaller little accomplishments of like overcoming stage fright or, mm. <laughs> you know, there's loads of sort of things you can... Um, know engross yourself with that can keep you in a sort of high frequency even if it's not always a positive subject um but it sort of can keep you a little bit humble at at times I suppose sure sure. Mm. let's talk about relationships Mm. okay big part of life people get together they stay together for a while some people are very happy some people are like not happy um, what advice would you give those people then that are, you know, I think you touched on in a on about there was no reason to stay with people, you know, if there was a, um, you know, uh, a violence in the relationship and stuff like that. Mm. But what's your advice to those people listening and thinking, well, I'm not quite happy with my life at the minute. My partner's doing me head in, but I also love them, you know, mm. or, you know, things like what, what advice would you give that person? You know, do they just, do they just stick with it and try and change them? Do they try, you know, or do they then say, actually, it's not a right fit, you know, perhaps mm. I need to find someone else. What, what's your advice there? Because there's a lot, I see a lot of it because I know a lot of people and I hear mm. it all the time. Mm. What's your kind of advice there on a kind of frequency level and manifestation level for people to have the perfect relationships? Um, build a relationship with yourself, more importantly. Um, you can never change I just want to drop this else. mic, but I don't want to because it's expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's such a waste of energy and like mental capacity trying to change somebody else, um, you know, moaning to them, telling them repeatedly you're upset by their actions because other person would know what they're doing is bothering you. But it might not be because they don't care. They might have their own issues going on. Um, so to not take things personally would be my number one advice, I suppose. Um, build your relationship with yourself because... I guess when you're so focused on yourself, you see all the amazing qualities in yourself, you're focused on your purpose, what you want to do. You don't have an awful lot of time to sit there dwelling and focusing on what somebody else is doing, how they're not showing up for you. Because why does it matter? You're showing up for yourself. Um, So I guess if something's going wrong in your relationship, um, and that's sort of consistent there is no change sort of maybe like stay, take a step back um focus on yourself a little bit because you know time and distance is such a great thing to look at things differently I suppose um yeah yeah make time for yourself mm. I like that um 
Okay, let's talk about one other subject before I wrap this podcast up. Mm-hmm. Money. Let's talk about money, right? For yeah. those people who are listening to this podcast or indeed watching it on the, the power of social media, YouTube and things, mm-hmm. and they want to make loads of money. You know, mm-hmm. that's their motivation. For me, I would just want to make people happy. Mm-hmm. And make a truckload of money as well. What yeah. would you say for people watching this for a tip for making some good money for the rest of this year? Um... Time and energy management. Um, I was watching a video the other day and he perfectly explains it. It's like, um, say you were on earth and there's like a rocket next to you and your rocket represents your business. Um, and to fuel your business, uh, to fuel the rocket, you obviously need fuel. And let's say in this instance, fuel is time and energy. Okay, so we've only got a certain amount of hours in a day and I know our energy levels are very different. You know, some people feel energized all the time and others don't. Um, So let's look at our energy and um, let's say we have a hundred units of energy and only 10 hours of time. Let's look at, let's make a box and look at where's all my time and energy going. Okay, so I waste a lot of time on, I don't know, say social media or something or going out with friends um, or just like, say, reading or watching TV, you know, all all the normal sort of things Mm. people do. Okay, so how much time do I spend on social media? Oh, that's a lot. How much energy am I wasting on that? Okay, what can I better use this for and put it into like your business, into your purpose? Because... If someone else in the world is using that same amount of time to fuel their passions and their dreams, why can't you? It's a bit of, I guess, like time and energy management is the biggest sort of thing. And um, there's this thing called like asymmetric leverage. So asymmetric is like you could put the smallest amount in to get the sort of biggest result. So instead of wasting time on like the... Everything, not everything's minute, but say on things that don't matter as much, say like you're building a business and um, you're putting a lot of time on like your branding and your website. There are very important things, but without the actual products, you've got nothing to market and to display. So focus your energy on say like your products or selling it in the first place. Um, just sort of Doing an analysis on what is the most important thing and I guess invest your time in that would be my like biggest tip. Mm. So we're getting close to the end of this podcast now because we're trying to keep it within 20 minutes to oh, keep, okay. help people um, <laughs> get it within their commute to work. Um, mm. Is there anything you'd like to talk about that I've not prompted you for in this podcast that you want to get across or any kind of leaving tips or advice for the, the viewers and listeners? Um, I guess don't let where you live, um, sort of deter you from chasing your dreams. I know a lot of people my age say that there's nothing in Cornwall, there's no opportunities here and that you have to leave county in order to pursue your dreams. And I just want you to take a moment and understand that what is beneath your feet at the moment, because obviously Cornwall's rich mining heritage and... They didn't have machinery. They didn't have anything other than will and determination to break the ground. If you think how hard it is to break a piece of rock, they the amount of work it took to do that is insane. So, you know, it's all about your sort of mindset and your will to put into something, if that makes sense. Yeah, being willing, being mm. able. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you go. If you have that mindset of, oh, there's nothing here, Nothing will be there, so try and make your own opportunities. Great advice from someone so young. (laughs) I'm impressed, Georgia. (laughs) I knew I was going to impress. Anyway, uh, you do great work, like I said, down at the chamber. You've been, ever since you joined, you just radiate great energy at the events, and everyone always feels welcome when you're there. And uh, that was great stuff. Absolutely great stuff. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. No, definitely. Thank you very much. You know? But I just echo what you said, though. The whole thing with being in Cornwall. I love Cornwall. I'm Cornish. Mm. is where I'm from. Um, but, <clears throat> and the reason why I wanted to set up these kind of studios and everything is because I thought, well, I don't want to leave Cornwall and be based somewhere else. Yes, I do work outside of Cornwall. Of course I do. But 
this is this is where I've decided to base the business because it's possible, right? Mm-hmm. Anything, Anything is possible with thought and application and taking action to get there mm-hmm. and surrounding yourself with awesome people. So I'm going to make sure I hang around you as much as I can without, hmm. you know, winding you up and you saying, that Shane, go away. I oh, know, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Georgia, thank you very much. Well, uh, that's the end of another episode here of Morning Mojo. As always, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Jay Kennett for producing this podcast for me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. And as always, I wish you the most amazing remainder of your day. But for myself and Georgia, we'll see you soon.